Hello everyone, welcome to my review of Wanted Dead, a brand new action game by former members of Team Ninja's glory days. Though I do like modern Team Ninja as well. And this game has been getting a very interesting reception to say the least. IGN gave it a 4 out of 10. And we'll talk about the IGN more specifically as we go on in the review. But I want to begin with my initial impression because I think it helps bring the review into context. And so when I first picked up Wanted Dead, I wasn't sure what to expect. I don't think many people were because the gameplay footage that was shown in the trailers didn't really paint a clear picture of what exactly was going on. And when it comes to action games, you often have to get them in your hands to even know how they feel anyway. And so when I first started playing, I thought, this is odd. This wasn't what I was signing up for because I basically thought it would be Ninja Gaiden with guns. I think that was an expectation of a lot of people. Hey, where's that fast, fluid Ninja Gaiden style combat? Where is that superhuman strength, ability to block bullets? The IGN guy complained about that. Basically, you rush down people and every now and again you pull out some guns and shoot them. I think that was kind of the game a lot of people were hoping or expecting for. And that is not what Wanted Dead delivered. Instead, you have this pretty big emphasis on gunplay. You even have like tactical grenades. And then on top of that, your melee attacks are slow. There isn't these long fluid combos that you flow through from one to another, doing dodge steps and free step cancels and air dashes and all the other crap you do in other character action games. So my initial impression was, uh oh, they've dumbed the game down. This is going to be for the noobs and for the casual people. Let's just try and do all the Ninja Gaiden stuff and see if it worked. And it turned out very little of it worked. I tried block buffering. That didn't work. I tried doing combos and mix ups and using the pistol like a shuriken in Ninja Gaiden. That didn't seem to work. It felt like the melee combat in the game was really clunky and slow, almost Sekiro or Dark Souls style. And then the gunplay was way more emphasized than I was expecting. I'm like, oh, I'm actually taking cover and throwing grenades and aiming and doing bullet management. This is not exactly what I was thinking I was going to get. And so that was day one of Wanted Dead. And I was very close. I was this close to just saying, forget it. I'm sure the game's whatever. I'm sure it's got its fans or whatever like that. But I'm not going to continue onward with this. I've got other things to do, other videos to make, other reviews to cover. I'll put it down and call it good. But then I went to bed and looked up at the ceiling and thought to myself, there is something to this game. As I was playing it, it was hinting at these other mechanics and things and this depth, but I couldn't really access it. I couldn't really figure out how the game worked. But then I thought about another game I had a very similar experience with. Now give a moment for you all to guess what that game is. Surprise, surprise, that game was an arcade Capcom classic called Alien vs. Predator. So when I first played Alien vs. Predator, and I played Lin. I was thinking, oh, this is kind of cool, but busted and janky. But then I went onto YouTube and watched all these insane Lin runs and them doing air combos and juggles and bouncing people off with the sword and doing these moves. Some of them I wasn't even aware of. And then it all clicked into place. I went back and played and bam, the game opened up to me. I realized, okay, this is how it works. And so what often happens with action games, and I think reviewers need to keep this in mind, players need to keep this in mind, is when you're first playing them and they're doing something new, they're doing something unexpected, there's often that linchpin, that key, that once you tap into it, once you figure it out, the game comes together. It all starts to come together. And so I was thinking, won't I feel like an absolute idiot that I do this review or I miss out on the review because I couldn't figure this out and I was just writing the game off like IGN or so many other people? Think of God Hand. That shit happened with God Hand. So I woke up the next day, I got my Xbox 360 controller, I went back into training mode, and I started labbing the game out like a fighting game. <clears throat> and that is when I found the linchpin for the game, the mechanic that brought it all into focus and in together, which is when you're attacking, if you press guard on the end animations of your attack, you cancel out the end animations. This is a mechanic that often comes up in action games and fighting games. A famous example of this is Mars down tilt in Melee, where if you do a back cancel on it, you can down tilt way, way faster and recover from the down tilt way faster. And it makes the down tilt an okay, kind of decent move, 
into a godlike, amazing move that is the staple of his moveset. Turns out, that is exactly the case here in Wanted Dead. So once you learn how to guard cancel the cooldown of your attacks, all of the moves make sense. Her entire move set makes sense. The game now makes sense. So you're going from what a lot of other reviews are saying, like the iGen reviews, which is all the moves suck, you're super slow, you're just parrying all day, you don't have that strength and speed that you have in other games. Well, you actually do, you just have to earn it. Just like Melee and just like fighting games and just like Alien vs Predator, you actually need to learn some timing. And at first I thought, oh, maybe this is a bit of an oversight from the developer on the straight attack. So you'll see a lot of footage here. I will repeat the first swing all the time. But what I was finding is, no, this works on like everything. Every attack, every move has some type of guard cancel. And then you can actually start to string them together. So you shoot the pistol, you can cancel that into a slash, but then you can cancel the slash into a dash. So you can pistol dash, pistol dash, or you can pistol dash slash and then cancel the end of that slash into a regular combo so you can do all these openings now that didn't make sense before same thing with your sword attack so you're coming in and if you don't guard cancel the end of your sword attack you're slow and you're sometimes negative on block but if you cancel the end animation now you're positive on block so what's that mean this is all just a bunch of technical mumbo jumbo so what that means is basically all the things that other reviewers are criticizing the game for is because they didn't explore the mechanics deeply enough because they've all been bred on Bayonetta and Devil May Cry, which do all this stuff for you. So Bayonetta, you don't need to cancel anything. Everything just cancels into anything. You can just swing and hit buttons and everything cancels. Same thing with most modern action games. Now everything just done for yourself. But these old school beat em ups and these old school action games like Ninja Gaiden, the game that everyone keeps saying, oh, I love Ninja Gaiden. But at the same time, well, if you love Ninja Gaiden so much, didn't you stop to think that Itagaki probably put some mechanics in here that you're not quite aware of that aren't in the tutorial? But anyway, why I'm starting the review like this is because if you do not understand or do not explore the combat mechanics beyond just the pure surface level, you're not going to access what this game has to offer. You're not going to enjoy it. And if you read the reviews, like the four out of 10 on IGN, what basically happened is the reviewer came in, he just did the tutorial, he just took it verbatim, okay, this is everything there is, and then came to the conclusion, the only viable play strategy in this game is to parry, that's it, it's like Sifu. But what I think is funny is that this guy also gave Sifu a nine out of 10, so I don't even understand this. He gives Wanted Dead a four out of 10, complaining about the parrying, complaining about how the entire game is just parrying stuff, and then play Sifu, the whole game in Sifu is literally just parrying. That's all Sifu does is you parry and counter. That's the whole game. It's meant to be that way. That's a nine out of 10. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. And a lot of this guy's criticisms when you're going through and reading it, they make no sense. It doesn't even match up to what the game is trying to do. He complains that there's no air juggles in this game. I don't even know how to respond to that criticism. Does every game need to be Devil May Cry and Bayonetta? In what world is stone air juggling people? I don't even understand what, how that would make sense. It's a tactical shooter melee hybrid. Are you air juggling people in Red Dead Revolver? That's the problem with today's reviews when it comes to action games and probably just overall, which is it's all about that initial first impression spoon feeding the reviewer. So any in-depth mechanics, any of that kind of crap, Forget it. We need our action games to be like Sifu, where everything is purely telegraphed. And that is my assumption of why he hates Wanted Dead, but loves Sifu. Because on paper, the two games have so much in common, it's insane to me that one's a nine and one's a four. And the reason why I'm going on about this so much is because IGN, when it comes to games like this, I can't help but notice a bit of a trend with them, which is when it comes to big, large studio games, like Harry Potter, for example, these games are essentially too big to fail. IGN is going to give Harry Potter a 9 out of 10, even if it's combat, it's absolutely stupid. But at the same time, when a smaller studio is coming out and doing something interesting, like Gungrave Gore or Wanted Dead, IGN have this thing where they want to overcompensate for all the shilling they do for all the big studio games 
by absolutely battle axing these little smaller double A studio games. So Gungrave, six out of ten. Wanted Dead, four out of ten. See, see, we're IGN, we're so dynamic. We don't just give every game seven out of ten. We give seven out of ten to every big studio game. And then we give these absolutely unfair dismissive reviews to smaller action games, which don't check all our little boxes. But anyway, that's how I feel about the IGN review. It doesn't even give a clear conclusion as to what the problem with Wanted Dead is, because there'll be criticisms where it'll say in one section, the skill tree is not detailed enough. I need more progression in the skill tree, and we'll talk about that. But then at the bottom of review, it says, too many of the important stuff is locked in the skill tree. Now, you can have one of these two criticisms, but you can't have both because they are contradictory to one another. You can't say in one paragraph, the skill tree is too limited, and then the next paragraph say, well, but the skill tree locks away too many of the important attacks. It has to be one or the other. And if you go through that review, I'm very tempted to just point by point it, but I shouldn't. You'll just find how dismissive it is and how it doesn't even come to a coherent conclusion of what the problem with the game is. It's just all these sort of vague critiques and at the end, it's a bad game. Four out of ten. The most coherent criticism is that the game's parry mechanic is too OP. Which, fine, okay, you could think that and that could have some basis, but then why are you giving something like Sifu, which is just parry all day, a nine out of ten? They do one review, oh, I like parries, you know, nine out of ten. Developers read that, and I'm sure a certain amount of developers influenced, oh, parries, parries seem to be in vogue. They do parries, and then a few months later, you know, screw parries, four out of ten. Without any coherent explanation of how they went from giving Sifu nine out of ten to Wanted Dead a four out of ten for the same mechanic. But anyway, I want to continue on with my thoughts of the game. So I figured out the guard cancel mechanic, and that really opened things up because it doesn't just apply to your sword swings, it also applies to your rolls. So you can actually guard cancel your rolls, and if you're really quick, you can actually guard cancel your dashes. And then what I started to pick up on is if you start to pay attention to the states of your attacks and start canceling them, her moveset does start to flow together. It does have a coherent design behind it. And so what I'm getting at here is once you learn how to guard cancel the moves, you can string them together. And then you start to realize, oh, Stone has way more moves than I thought. They're just linked to different states. It's like playing another game called Dead or Alive. So when you first start playing Dead or Alive, you think, oh, my character has three attacks. Guard, kick, punch. That's simple. But then when you start to pay attention, oh, based off of your position, you get a different attack. So if you're ducking, you get a rising attack. If you're stepping forward, you get a punch. If you're stepping backwards, you get a different swing. And so playing DOA and what makes you good at DOA is managing the transitional states between your stances. Pretty similar stuff here. Not exactly like DOA, but the idea makes sense. And then there's the question of the parries. And it is absolutely true that the parries in the game are very powerful. Again, if that is the case, how is that different from Sifu? But luckily, that is not the case because you can do other things because unlike Sifu, Stone can actually move around in real space. There's not that lock on mechanic like in Sifu. So what I'm saying is, yes, you can play the game like you just parry all the enemy attacks and learn to play the game that way, like Sekiro or Dark Souls also share the same mechanic. So it's really weird that we're pointing it out with Wanted Dead rather than these other games but you actually don't have to play that way. What you can do is you can space and move. So it turns out with her roll and her runs, Stone is really fast. You can beat a ton of the bosses without parrying one time. And I'll show footage here of me beating bosses without ever needing to parry. So parry is a very powerful move in the game, but unlike Sifu, it's not actually 100% required, except the final boss. The final boss, the game does go Sifu mode and say, okay, parry this, but other than the final boss who has like absurd tracking on his attacks, everything else you can still outspace and maneuver around using fundamentals. It's not just a game of Simon Says with the parry. So that's my discussion of the melee combat. Is it as good as Ninja Gaiden? No, of course not. Is the game as good as Ninja Gaiden overall? No, of course not. But let us not forget Ninja Gaiden is the greatest action game ever made. So. A lot of games are going to fall short to Ninja Gaiden. That doesn't make them a 4 out of 10. And actually, the more and more I play Wanted Dead and the more I get into the flow of the combat, 
The more I really like the game, it's a god hand type situation where the game comes out, gets absolutely dunked on by critics and people on Steam and like the mainstreams basically, but it's going to have this core audience of hardcore people who really like the game because the game is really unique. You're not going to find another game like this because it's doing a really cool combination of melee action game combat, beat em up combat with gunplay. And how often do people sit down on paper and say, oh, wouldn't that be cool if you had a game that mixed melee and gunplay? But whenever this comes up, what ends up happening? One or the other totally dominates the other. So Bayonetta, Devil May Cry, they have gunplay, but how much are you actually straight up shooting things and playing like a shooter? Very little. And then on the other side of the coin, you have Gungrave, which has really cool gunplay and ranged combat, but its melee combat is intentionally bad and weak and kind of a last resort. That game is all about spacing with the guns. Well, Wanted Dead is this interesting in-between where it is trying really hard, and I don't think another game does it as well, to balance those two ideas. So we talked about the melee combat. I think the melee combat has much more depth than people are giving it credit for, but it's still not going to be straight up Ninja Gaiden, because if it was just that good, you just do melee combat all the time. So it needs to be balanced. And the other half of the coin is the gunplay, and I think the gunplay in this game is really fun. Once you get into the flow of it and understand how it works, because once again, people coming into the game are expecting to play either a third person shooter or Ninja Gaiden. And your brain kind of flips into those gears, right? So you first get your gun, you start shooting it. You're like, oh, I'm playing Gears of War right now, except my ammo count is low. Where's all my ammo? Oh, what do I do? And then you're like, okay, now I'm going to play Ninja Gaiden. So you run in. And you're trying to block bullets like the reviewer said he wish you could block bullets you're trying to do flying swallows and guillotine throws and all the ninja guiding stuff uh oh stone can't do flying swallows and guillotine throws what do i do well it turns out that the fun of the game and the interesting part of the game and why it's growing on me a lot is managing that gray area between the two styles of gameplay you start to develop a skill set which most other games don't ask you to learn which is when am I doing ranged combat? When am I doing melee combat? What are the scenarios for this? And you'll start to pick up. Like, when you first play the game, I'm sure many of you in stage one, they have that arena with all the people in the very beginning. How many of you had just ran in there and started swinging your sword at people? And what'd you find? Everyone just lights you up and shoots you in the head. And then how many of you took the opposite approach of you just kind of sat back and tried to like pick them off Gears of War style? Neither of those two approaches work. That's not how Wanted Dead plays. It's all about sticking and moving. You come in, you throw a grenade, you shepherd people to the side, then you flank around, you shoot them from the flank. It's all about sticking and moving. One of the other complaints that I've seen reviewers saying is, why am I getting grenaded behind cover all the time? Why can't I sit behind cover and pick people off Gears of War style? The developers intentionally did that to make you move, to keep you moving. So it's all about that tension where you can't run in and just start swinging on people. You're going to get lit up with machine guns, but you can't hide behind cover all day either. You need to stick and move with these tactical attacks. Once you get that down, the level design comes into focus, the combat comes into focus, and it's a really fun time. But like I said at the beginning of the review, you're probably not going to get it at first. I know I didn't because you haven't played a game quite like this before. It's gonna take some time and effort to navigate how the mechanics work, but once it clicks into gear, it clicks into gear and then you're cooking and then you're moving and then you're having a really good time. And so an objective measurement of this is my first playthrough of the game probably took me about six hours of trial and error, grinding my teeth against certain sections and bosses. It felt like you take one step forward and two steps back. And is it at all surprising that this is pissing off game reviewers who want to just cruise through the game as quickly and easily as possible? But in that journey of taking one step forward and two steps back, you are learning the mechanics, you're learning the design. And so after my first playthrough, I took a break, I ate a sandwich, and I came back and I cleared the game in about three hours, just cruising through it. I hardly ever died the second time, and that was just a few hour difference between my first playthrough in my second playthrough and the reason for that is because at some point in that first playthrough around stage five actually it came into focus it came into gear i felt like i was no longer flailing 
I felt like I understood and I came into a lot of the fights with more confidence. And so my second playthrough, I was blasting through it. And so the crazy thing was, this was an all nighter. Six hours up until about two o'clock in the morning and then another three hours into five in the morning. And what did I want to do? I wanted to play it again a third time to see if I could get it no death. And so I might do a no death run of the game on this channel. I'm sure Iconoclast will beat me to that on his channel because he's a legendary gamer. So what I'm getting at here is that with this game, much like Gungrave Gore actually, do not live and die by your first impression. And I know we've all got a shot clock with our gameplay time because of Steam refunds, but that's just another criticism of Steam refunds in my opinion. That system, like many other systems in the gaming industry, is all about pandering to your base, basic appetite. Easy, non-offensive, non-challenging content in gaming. Because if you present mainstream gamers with a game that's going to challenge them and do something new, you're going to get a lot of 4 out of 10s and a lot of Steam refunds. Because everyone is just looking for that game that reminds them of another game that's just like the game they played before and they know what to do and there's nothing too difficult. It's all easy sailing. Hell forbid there are checkpoints. That was another critique of the IGN review. Oh my god, 10 minute checkpoints with mid bosses in them? Who would imagine a game where you have a checkpoint and then a challenging boss at the end of the checkpoint? It's almost like the game is building tension. It's almost like the game is creating stakes for the player. It's almost like when you get to the boss and you know, if I don't beat this mid boss, I got to cruise through another 10 minutes of challenging gameplay. That is going to be scary and difficult. And that is not how gaming is done, people. In the year 2023, gaming is all about forward progression at all times. You get to the boss or a mid boss, you get a checkpoint right before them. Not only that, you get a checkpoint in middle of the fight between the phases. So you beat phase one, you get a checkpoint in phase two. And it sounds like I'm being facetious, but a lot of games do that now. A lot of games literally checkpoint the boss phases so you don't even need to learn the bosses anymore and so wanted dead this poor game had no chance to begin with it's violent it's challenging it doesn't save spam you it's got a unique combat system and it's not by a big publisher it's like everything that could count against you this game has coming into it but this is not ign this is the Electric Underground. I will probably do a no death commentary of it just to give myself more of an excuse to keep playing it. I definitely do recommend it. Is it Ninja Gaiden? No, it's not that good. I would give it an actual 7 out of 10, but the problem is that every game is now a 7 out of 10. And then mediocre games like Bayonetta 3 and Sifu are 9s out of 10. So review scores don't even make sense anymore anyway. So that's why I don't even bother with them. My biggest critique of it isn't actually within the game, it's the pricing of the game. $60, that's too much. The era where games should cost $60, in my opinion, needs to come to an end. The $60 price tag is why we keep getting these massive, bloated, giant releases. Because in order for the developers to feel like they're justifying a $60 price tag, they need to just throw in all this filler and bloat, and I hate that crap. So I wouldn't want to see more filler and bloat in Wanted Dead. I actually think the game length is really nice. And people say it is four stages. That isn't true at all. It is actually five stages. It's just people forget that there's no headquarters sequence between stage four and five. So people think it's just like one giant stage. But on top of that, it does the Dodon Pachi and Shmup thing and Metal Slug thing where the last two stages are longer than the beginning two stages. And this is another criticism I'm seeing that doesn't make sense is people complain that the game is too short, but then they also complain that the final stage is too long. I think this formula works perfectly well. It is the arcade formula. It's tried and true. It works for a reason. And I actually really like the last two stages of the game. A personal highlight of mine was the first time I was playing and stage four, spoiler, spoiler, ends up being the police station. That is the hub world of the game. I was so happy when that happened because one thing that I'm not a fan of is hub worlds, but when games take the hub world and turn them into a stage, I absolutely do love that crap. That's like Battle of Hogwarts type of stuff. 
I was always hoping that Super Mario 64, for example, you'd have like a final boss fight out in the courtyard or something of the castle. Big missed opportunity, in my opinion. So I was a big fan of the police headquarters actually becoming a stage. That was really cool. The final boss, I'll admit, is a bit of a disappointment. I wish it was more interesting and challenging rather than a parry fest. I guess they were thinking if we did the twin tanks and then we did the boss fight afterward, that would feel like a pretty cool sequence. And it was pretty cool, but I think the final boss himself could have brought more to the table. So overall, two thumbs up for me. And I was also really delighted to see the little shmup minigame. I did not know that was in there. And when that popped up, I was really excited by that. But I'm going to cover that in a whole separate video. So don't worry about that here. Now, even though I do recommend the game, I do think it is too expensive at $60. It just shouldn't be that much to begin with. So if you want to wait for it to go on sale for $40 or $30, I think that's a much more sensible price point. So it's a weird situation where I fully recommend the game, but you probably should wait for it to go on sale, which it will, especially with the IGN review. Just because 60, I think is too much to pay. I mean, if you really want to get it, like I really like it, I'll pay 60 for it, but I can't comfortably recommend it at that price point because I just think it's too much to begin with. So probably wait for it to drop down till 30 or 40. And just a quick reminder, the t-shirt sale to support the channel is still happening for the next two weeks. So follow the link in the video description to pick one up. This is kind of a limited period until winter to order one. And it just really helps me out. So I would appreciate that. So please like, subscribe, tell all your friends. Adios, everyone. So thank you to the $5 patrons, 100, 100, accepting Panda, Alexander Pfeiffer, Dingo, Another Joe, Anthony A, Aaron Solis, Arrow Viper, Bo, Ben, Beto Dames, Borgi22, Brian Shiver, Chase Palumbo, Chato Maltese, Chris Yusufovich, Chronic Burnout 3, Climby Coyote, Coast, Color Boy, Cook Sand 666, Cook Some Soup, Cory Mark, Des Audio, Danchi, Darren Griffin, Datrot, Delta Tango 6, Disco Stas Leia, DJ420, Praise It, Eric H, Fantaside, FCK, Francisco, Full Set, Retro Schmupper, Jake Ryan, JLab, JBRPG, John Kelly, Game Boy Guru, K, K2, Khalil Reedy, Contain, K Horse, Larage, Malaise, Matt O'Leary, The Goddamn Milkman, Maz, Megadeth859, Minung, Mechelin, Michael Stum, Mitchell Y, Queen Charlene, Nathaniel Davis, Neon Dagger Games, Oakla Googles, Psycho Blizzard, Rattle Cat, Raul, Real Skeen, Riff Mason, Rolf 015, Sarah, Scanline City, Seesaw SDG, Shmup Junkie, Sarah Pong, Steve Fiction, Street Magic, Super Funk, Takero Mucho, The Boot Rex, The Dirty Screech, The N1, The Old Bensta, TRM, Sugumo, Tuwayu, Twilight EX, Unicoi Roots, Vic Viper, Wabby Legs, X20 Spec, Boghog, and Utakaya. Thanks for watching.